What do you get when you cross Keep Away with an iconic Spanish soccer club? This is Rondo 5v2. Yes, the game you thought you invented at recess was actually developed by FC Barcelona, and it helps players develop their passing and teamwork skills. Create a square with your cones. Arrange your players in a circle just inside your cones, with five attackers on the outside and two defenders in the center. Give your defenders pennies to hold, not to wear, since players will trade positions often. Shifting and moving the whole time. Let's go. Play. Here's how it looks. It's classic monkey in the middle. The attackers pass around or between the defenders who try to win the ball. The idea is quick, controlled touches. The more, the better. But if a pass goes out of bounds or is intercepted, the attacker who last touched it swaps places with a defender. The best players in the world train with this game because it mimics what happens on the field. Passing in tight spaces, quick thinking, and cooperation. Keep track of consecutive passes and try to top that number as a team each round. Play. One, two, three. Oh, I love it. Coaches, encourage your attackers to draw defenders in before passing. Defenders, meanwhile, should avoid lunging in for the ball. Remind them to stay balanced and communicate with their partner. <laughs> Remember, controlled touches, short passes, cooperation. You'll be coaching Barcelona in no time, or not. Break out the board shorts and sunblock. We're playing Hawaii. A small-sided game is a scrimmage with a twist. In this one, we're helping players work on shooting from a distance and transitioning between attacking and defending. Use cones to create a square space, then place goals or pairs of cones about five yards back from your grid, two goals on each end. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or 5v5. Here, we're playing 3v3. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players can score on either goal on their end line, but they have to shoot from inside the grid. The idea is for players to hone their shooting accuracy in the midst of a chaotic, fast-moving game. Don't worry about throw-ins or kick-ins. Just keep a bunch of balls next to you, coach, and keep feeding them in. We want players looking up to find the nearest goal as soon as they receive the ball, then seeing if they can take a shot right away. But they'd better move fast because a smaller space makes the defender's job a lot easier. Expect plenty of turnovers with players transitioning frequently between attacking and defending. Just add that to the why this game is great pile. Coaches, embrace the chaos and fun in this game and consider resisting the urge to correct your players or give immediate feedback. Sometimes the best coaching is observing. Remember, look for the goal, win the ball, take the shot. If you close your eyes, you can almost smell the ocean breeze. We're taking a new angle on the beautiful game. This is 2v2 to cross goals. Here, we're working on players' attacking and shooting skills. Use cones to create a square space with a goal or pair of cones in the middle of each end line and each touch line. That's right, four goals. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Two attackers initiate play, trying to score on any goal except for the goal behind them. Two defenders, meanwhile, can steal or intercept the ball and score two, just not on the goal behind them. When a player scores or the ball goes out of bounds, new players rotate in and a new round begins. With so many ways to score, we want players heads up to find the closest goal and attack it as soon as they receive the ball or we want their heads on a swivel, looking to find their partner who should be running to open space to receive a pass. Coaches, with three goals to protect, it's easy for defenders to get discouraged. Encourage them to work together to put pressure on the attackers and try to steal the ball away, like this. Good defense. Remember, heads up, find the nearest goal, take a shot. So many goals, so little time. Get those celebration dances ready. We're playing 4v4 to small goals, attacking. Here, we're working on small group attacking and shooting skills. Use four cones to mark a rectangular space and place small goals or pairs of cones placed arms length apart on each end line. Divide your players into two groups, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Teams of four line up on opposite end lines, one with the ball. 
From there, it's a scrimmage, with players trying to score on the goal or by kicking the ball through the cones below knee height. There are no goalies, corners, or throw-ins. If a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. It's common for younger attackers to run parallel to each other at first, kind of like that. Encourage them to instead spread out and stagger their positions, like this, to create more space and more opportunities for passing. Teamwork and movement are key. When an attacker receives a pass, we want them thinking, can I get around this defender by dribbling? If not, can I pass to a teammate who can? Always trying to take the ball somewhere new, closer to the goal. Coaches, encourage players to use their outside foot to dribble by or around defenders, like that. This way, they're keeping their body between the ball and the defender. Remember, spread out, find open space, pass to a teammate. Teamwork makes everything better. A good defense sticks together. You'll see how in this game, 4v4 to small goals, defending. Here, we're developing individual and small group defending skills. Use four cones to mark a rectangular space and place small goals or pairs of cones placed arm's length apart on each end line. Divide your players into two groups, one in pennies. Here's how it looks. Teams of four line up on opposite end lines, one with the ball. From there, it's a scrimmage, with players trying to score on the goal or by kicking the ball through the cones below knee height. There are no goalies, corners, or throw-ins. If a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. We want defenders working together to take away time and space from attackers. What does that mean? Taking away time means getting pressure to the ball quickly, and taking away space means staying connected and compact, preventing attackers from getting through with the ball. To do this, we need defenders to support each other. While one takes on the attacker with the ball, the others find positions nearby. It looks something like this. Pressure on the ball, a layer of backup, and a helpless attacker with nowhere to move or pass. Coaches, you may see younger attackers rushing the ball and making mistakes. It's okay, they're just excited. And it provides all the more opportunity for defenders to capitalize and make their move. Remember, apply pressure, get compact, work as a team. Anyone else suddenly craving pizza? A small-sided game is like a scrimmage with a twist. This is Half Court Soccer. In this one, we're working on team attacking and defending skills while squeezing the game into half the space. Use cones to create a rectangular grid that's wider than it is long. On one end, add more cones to form a line. This will be your check line. Place your goal on the other end. Divide players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more, plus an optional additional player as goalie who rotates. Here, we're playing 3v3 plus a goalie. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage, but both teams are trying to score on the same goal, just like in half-court basketball. The other rule we're stealing from hoops? If a team steals the ball, they need to clear it by dribbling it across the check line, like that, before they attempt to score. In other words, no quick steals and shots from close range. Other than that rule, we're working on the same skills as in other scrimmages for attackers to spread out and work as a team to beat defenders. And for defenders to make a quick approach to the ball, then to get low and slow as they get close. Coaches expect things to get a little congested since both teams are going for the same goal. Encourage your players to think of the check line as an opportunity to work on their passing skills and to use their shielding skills to maintain possession of the ball, like that, as they clear the ball and make their plan of attack. Remember, check the ball, spread out, take a shot. A little hoops flavor can make your practice even sweeter. This game is too hot to handle. It's called Hotbox. In this small-sided game, we're helping players learn to switch the point of attack by putting a big ol' obstacle in their way. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Then use four more cones to create a square in the center of your grid, also known as the Hotbox. Divide players into teams of three, four, or more. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones below knee height. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. 
There's just one hitch. Players can't enter the hotbox. Only balls can pass through. What does this mean? Attackers with the ball may find their path blocked by defenders with a touchline on one side and the hotbox on the other, giving them less room to maneuver. The solution? Switch the point of attack by sending the ball to a teammate. Play five-minute rounds. The team with the most goals wins the round. Coaches, this is a great time to reinforce techniques you've introduced during practice, like small group attacking. But don't overcoach. The rules of the scrimmage naturally push players to solve problems on their own in a fun way. Remember, heads up, find a teammate, keep out of the hot box. Seriously, is it getting hot in here? You'll never walk alone with this one. We're playing Liverpool. We love a good small-sided game. It's like a scrimmage with a twist, and this one pushes players to emulate one of the world's best teams. Liverpool's aggressive play style emphasizes winning the ball back as quickly as possible when they lose possession, which is what we're rewarding here. Use four cones to set up a rectangular space and place a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more. Here, we're playing 3v3. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. That's hard, like Liverpool. There we go. Goals are worth one point, but if a team wins the ball in their opponent's attacking half and then scores, it's two points. What does this mean? It means that when attackers cross the midpoint of the field with the ball towards the goal they're attacking, and the defending team manages to not only stop them, but win possession and score, they get twice the points. That's what we're going for. Think of it more as counterattacking than defending. Stopping the attack is good, but scoring on the counterattack is even better. Encourage defenders to get multiple players to the ball quickly and force a turnover or mistake to regain possession. Coaches, your players might not succeed right away or even this season. That's okay. This game is about putting the defending skills you've developed to work. Once we defend, I want you to get low. Does that make sense? Attackers, meanwhile, get to practice their shielding skills. They'll need them. Remember, apply pressure, win possession, and score. Today, the rec field. Tomorrow, and field. Hey, has anyone seen the field? It's getting smaller. This is Shrinking Field. Here we're developing team attacking and defending skills with a small-sided game that makes it progressively harder for the attacking team to score. Use four cones to create a grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide players into teams of three, four, or more. You can even play an odd number by giving one side an extra attacker or making one player all-time offense. Here, we're playing 3v3. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage, but without goalies. As in other scrimmages, players score by kicking the ball into an opponent's goal or through the cones below knee height. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. Easy, right? Not so fast. For each minute gone by, we move each touchline in by three steps. This narrower space will force your players to make decisions more quickly and probably a few mistakes along the way. No worries, that's the point. We're mimicking the situation of playing in tighter spaces and under pressure. And with less latitude for attackers, defenders gain an advantage. The team with the most goals after three minutes wins the round. Coaches, emphasize the shielding and passing techniques you've worked on in practice here. As much as possible, we want attackers working together to get past defenders. Encourage defenders to get compact to stop the attack as a team and recover the ball, like that. Remember, shield the ball, pass to a teammate, stop the attack. Say hello to our little field. Let's play with some Catalan Elan. This is Barcelona. A small-sided game is a kind of scrimmage focused on developing a specific skill. In this case, it's passing, and it's inspired by one of the world's best teams. Barcelona's famous style of teamwork, often called tiki-taka, uses short, one-touch passes to maintain possession. Use four cones to create a rectangular grid with a goal or pair of cones on each end line. Divide your players into two teams, one in pennies. You can play 3v3, 4v4, or more. And if you have an odd number, you can make one player all-time offense. Here, we're playing 4v4. Here's how it looks. Players scrimmage without goalies. 
Players score by kicking the ball into the goal or between the cones, below knee height. But here's the twist. Players score based on how many passes the team completes before scoring a goal. Eight. Eight yeah, points eight point. for purple. Like this. If a team completes eight passes before scoring, they get eight points. But if they miss the goal, sorry, no points. There are no corners or throw-ins, and if a ball goes out of bounds, it's a kick-in. Play short rounds. The team with the most points at the end wins the round. 21! Great job, girls! Coaches, this is meant to be fun. Give your team room to play and hold the feedback for the end. Or use this opportunity to observe. Sometimes the best coaching insights come from simply watching your players in action. Remember, tight passes. Work as a team. Take the shot. Ain't no party like a tiki-taka party.